Now there is a sense in which Abraham is the father of all believers throughout history, men, women, and children. We're all a part of his family, his children, and his heirs. But as we'll see, the New Testament makes it very clear that we enjoy this status because we have been joined to Christ, who is the special seed of Abraham. To grasp how the scriptures teach this perspective, we'll touch briefly on two matters. First, the singularity of the concept of seed. Second, the concept of Christ as the unique seed of Abraham. Let's think first of the ways the Bible draws attention to the singularity of Abraham's seed. Perhaps the most significant passage that focuses on this issue is Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. There we find these words. The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. The scripture does not say, and to seeds, meaning many people, but, and to your seed, meaning one person, who is Christ. In this passage, Paul referred to the fact that in Genesis, God made promises to Abraham and to his seed, or offspring. But notice how Paul commented specifically on the expression seed, saying that God did not make promises to Abraham and to his seeds, that is to many people, but to Abraham and his seed, that is to one person, Christ. Paul argued this way by noting that the Hebrew word Zerah, which is translated seed, is a singular word. The same was true for the Greek word sperma in the Greek translation of the Old Testament available in Paul's day. As Paul noted, God did not say to Abraham that the promise was to Abraham and his seeds in the plural, but to his seed in the singular. Now on the surface, it would appear that Paul's point of view was straightforward. Abraham's inheritance came to just one seed or one descendant because the word is singular. But Paul's argument about the singularity of the word seed has raised all kinds of difficulties for interpreters. The problem may be put in this way. It is true that the word seed or zera is singular in form, but many times in the Old Testament, including in the stories of Abraham's life, the word seed in its singular form must be taken as a collective singular in meaning, a singular word that refers to a group. The Hebrew word zera or seed, is much like our English word offspring. Even though this word is singular in form, it can refer to just one offspring or descendant, or it can refer collectively to many offspring or descendants. For instance, the term seed or zera is definitely plural in meaning in Genesis chapter 15, verse 13. There we read these words that God spoke to Abraham. Know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated 400 years. Here the word descendants translates the singular Hebrew word zera, but the word is clearly plural in meaning. This verse speaks of the seed as their own in the plural, and the verbs, they will be enslaved and mistreated, are also plural in Hebrew. Of course, Paul knew that the singular form of the word seed referred to more than one person many times in Genesis. In fact, Paul himself used the word seed in a plural sense in Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, where he wrote these words, You are Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. In the Greek of this verse, the phrase you are translates este, a plural verb, and Abraham's seed is synonymous with the word heirs, kleronomoi, which is also plural. In this light, we have to ask a question. If Paul knew that the singular form of the term seed could refer to more than one person, why then did he stress its singularity? 
In all likelihood, Paul had in mind one particular passage in the life of Abraham. Genesis chapter 22, verses 16 through 18. In these verses, the term seed is definitely singular in meaning. Listen to this literal translation of these verses. By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have not withheld your son, your only son. Indeed, I will greatly bless you, and I will greatly multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Unfortunately, many modern translations render this passage as if seed were a collective singular. But we have to remember that this verse is part of the story of the sacrifice of Isaac. And here the word seed referred not to Abraham's descendants in general, but to Isaac, Abraham's son. The verb shall possess is singular in the Hebrew. And notice also that the pronoun in the phrase his enemies is singular. 